is worthless. I have not continued in the word, and I cannot be his disciple. I cannot claim to be a Christian. You recall in the book of Acts, the Christian, the, the disciples were renamed or called Christians at Antioch. So if we say we are Christians, we're saying we're the disciple of God. And he's setting out a condition here. Continue in my word. Continue in my word. In Luke 6, starting at verse 46, Jesus says again, Why call me, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? It is hypocrisy to say we're Christians, yet we do not obey the word of God. We have millions of Christians that do their own thing. We have millions of Christians that directly rebel against the word of God. And the rationale is other Christians are doing it. The problem is, on Judgment Day, other Christians will not stand with you to help you with God. <laughs> you will be judged for what you've done. Mm -hmm. by yourself. We cannot continue in the state of emulation looking at other people to determine what we should do. We have the guide, Jesus Christ. He's the only person we should try to mimic, only person we should try to follow, only person we should try to listen to and have direct our lives. And that includes not listening to ourselves. Are you with me? Let me keep reading here in Luke 6. Whosoever cometh to me, born again Christians, and hear of my sayings, and do with them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house, and dig deep, and laid a foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, and the, the, the stream beat vehemently against that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Notice what he says. Being founded on a rock is based on not only hearing the word of God, but doing it the word of God. Let us not be deceived. If we're not doing it, we're really not saved. We have a false expectation. We have a false expectation. <clears throat> Go to Romans 8. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read uh, starting with verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Let me pause. Notice it does not say there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. And stop. The period does not appear after Christ Jesus. It gives a condition for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the condition is this. God is saying there's a subset of Christians who walk after the flesh, and there's a subset of Christians who walk <coughs> after the spirit. Which means, if I'm a Christian, but I keep walking after the flesh, then there is condemnation. In other words, come judgment day, I will be condemned to the lake of fire. I don't want to leave this one verse, because it sets up the rest of Romans 8. We're talking about two types of Christians. Born again, spirit filled, all that good stuff. He says if you're walking by the flesh, you got condemnation coming to you, as opposed to walking by the spirit. Let's keep reading. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God setting his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned, condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded, that is to walk after the flesh, to be carnally minded is to walk after the flesh, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, is enmity against God. When I operate from a carnal mind, I am the enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 
We're going to pause here and go to 1 Corinthians 3. We're going to come back to Romans 8, but let's go to 1 Corinthians 3. We're talking about a carnal mind. And I want to give you evidence of your potential carnality. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse 3. Evidence of carnality. Here it goes. For ye are not yet carnal, for whereas, for are ye yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, strife, and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? And let me highlight the word divisions. Division means we have different beliefs about God. Division means we have different beliefs about God. In other words, we don't, do not have a unity of faith. This puts a stop to this lie out of Christianity that's about your personal experience with the Lord. That's a lie. That's false doctrine. That's considered a division. We all must have one faith. This is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. We must come together until uh, we come together in the unity of the faith and unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. That's what Christ came back for. 